So hello and good morning. Um, welcome to you all and welcome to week eight of our Money Sense Mondays. Gosh, I can't believe that we've been doing this for eight weeks now. Um, so the lesson in the next half an hour is for our five to eight year olds. And we're going to be looking today at small costs can have big impacts upon our spending. Um, I think, yeah, everything adds up at the end of the day, all those little costs. So that's what we're going to be looking at. My name is Trudy, so Trudy Zimmer. Those of you that haven't met me before or heard about me, I'm a community banker. Um, I live in the lovely part of the world down in Somerset. Um, normally I'd be out in the schools helping with these sessions, but uh, today I have the pleasure of bringing that to your homes and helping your parents with their homeschooling. So there are lots of things that cost money in life. And the good news is that over half of the people in the UK motor make a note of what they spend. But do we make a note of all those little things that we spend money on? So I guess if you think about your parents and if your parents were going out and buying a car, they're likely to have thought about that, maybe saved towards it, and certainly thought about how much it's going to cost over the long term. But do we do that with the little things? If we go out and buy an ice cream or go out and buy a bag of sweets, is that something we think about? And do we account for that? Because all those little things can add up. And as I said, that's absolutely what we're going to be looking at today. So let me hand over to my colleague, James, um, so he can introduce himself. Thank you, Trudy. Uh, week eight, we've made it, our final week. I'm, I'm <laughs> gutted about that. It's been so much fun doing these activities yeah. on Monday morning. Um, I don't know what else I'm going to do to fill my time. We'll have to find something, won't we? Um, but anyway, if, if you're joining us for the first time this week, where have you been? We've done so much. <laughs> done so many activities and we've had so many people joining us um, but if this is your first week then as Trudy said I'm James I'm a former primary teacher and a now creator of a number stacks maths resource as well so uh, we're here to help you and, and well help you learn a bit more about money I hope uh, as usual I've been making a note of all of the people that are joining us this morning and as usual there's a growing growing list so I'm going to go through and give some shout outs first. Now, first of all, before I go to the big list, I'm going to give a, a specific shout out to somebody called Layla, because Layla's commented as comments from Layla this week. So she's been watching every week and I missed her out. So I'm sorry, oh. Layla. Layla from East Yorkshire. Hello. Specifically Hello, Layla. To, <laughs> and to big deep breath here. We've got Red Pod and Green Pod from Cherry Orchard Primary School. We've got Year 5 at John Shelton Primary School. We've got Abby Solomon. Uh, Vanessa, Ruby, Ollie, Amelia, Zeta, <laughs> Liam and Ryan. We've got Aidan and I'm sorry if I've missed anyone else. Oh, Florence, there we go. Just popped up on my screen there as well. So hello to you all and we'll see if we can have some more fun on our final week this week. OK, first thing we want you to do then. Uh, I can't see you, but put your hand up if you're a bit fed up with lockdown. Yeah, we both are. And I'm sure lots of you have got your hands up as well. Yeah, lockdown has stopped us doing the things we would normally do on a weekend. So I want you to imagine for our starting activity this week that Boris Johnson in the news this week suddenly said, do you know what, everyone? You can go back to do what you used to do this weekend. Great. But what we want to know is what would you normally do on a weekend? If this Saturday you were suddenly allowed to do your, your normal things, what would a, your normal Saturday look like? Where would you go? What would you do? What might you spend some money on? Now, I'm not talking dream world here. I'm not thinking, oh, yeah, we'll go off to the Bahamas for a holiday. I'm thinking, what would you do typically to have a bit of fun on a Saturday? So drop your answers into the comment. I can see straight away there, Vicky said, go to McDonald's. Yeah, if you get out of the moment, if you're prepared to queue. And, uh, and Vanessa said, go to the... Uh, park and play with friends. Let's meet our families this week and see what they've got to say while you're putting your answers in. Let's go to uh, Lucy and Fraser. Fraser's back. I think this is your third week running, isn't it, Fraser? Third week. Third yeah. week in the hat trick. Yeah. Complete the hat trick before we finish. Fraser, go on, hit us with it. What would you do on a weekend? So, uh, I want to go to Bounce and beat San Peter King and go camping. Oh, I like it. So bounce. is this one of those trampoline parks where you have all the trampolines? Yeah, we've got one of those near us. Different name. Go to Pizza King. So go out for a pizza and um, yeah, camping. What camping. Like in, in the garden or at a campsite somewhere? At a campsite. So have you got one good near to you or would you have to try drive quite a distance? Drive 
quite a long way. Pack up the car and off you go. Great ideas there, Fraser. Thank you for that. I'll just go back to the pods. We've got the beach, swimming. The green pod said beach and swimming. Go to a water park. Um, have my birthday party because they missed it. I missed mine as well. I was 40 in lockdown and I was still waiting for my party as well. Stay in bed, someone said. That is a good idea as well. So I've been doing a little bit too much of that. <laughs> going to watch the football, says Joanne. Uh, let's go to Lindsay and Annie and see what they would do. Annie, what would you do? I would um, go bouldering in the morning with um, my family and friends and in the, and have um, hot dog and chips. <gasps> but, um, <coughs> and then for, in the af um, afternoon, I would go to the cinema and have popcorn and sweets and then go to Pizza Hut and have um, <laughs> their ice cream for Tea. Very, a very busy day and a common theme on all of those things was the food. <laughs> food. I think you, you, you like your food and snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Good. Thanks for sharing those ideas with us, Annie. Right then. Well, what's all this got to do with money? Well, as Trudy said, we're looking this week at about how the small things add up. And it's surprising sometimes. You often think of the big things in life, you know, like we've talked in previous weeks about the washing machine going wrong and having to buy that or saving up for a new car or a big holiday. But sometimes it's just it's not the big things that use all our money. It's, it's lots and lots of little things. So what I want you to do is have a look at the things that you mentioned on your list. We've got some ideas here on the screen. So playing games, uh, doing some craft at home, going to the cinema, going to the sweet shop. And just have a little look at your list at home and put a circle or a little star, a little asterisk next to all of the ones that would cost some money. And you'll probably be surprised that a lot of them or nearly all of them do cost money because even the ones we've got on the screen, even craft, when you think, well, craft's free because I can do it at home. But actually, you have to buy the paint or the, the things that you need to do it with and playing games. Well, you must have bought the games console and you probably have to um, buy the games to go with it. And everybody wants the latest game, don't they, Trudy? So Absolutely. It, it's still going to cost. Everything's still going to add up. Trudy, then, perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about how the banks are involved with this sort of thing. Mm, yeah, completely. So. The banks absolutely do help and they we help and we've mentioned this in previous weeks as well with some of the things we've gone over how we can help you keep a track of what you're spending so i don't know if you remember when we were going through some of those bigger things on spending we we're saying that maybe to note that down so to have a little notebook and to be writing down what you're spending and that's still the case whether it's big or small um so even if you're buying lots of little bits because um, children, you may get um, a small amount of pocket money, but actually if you wrote down the little things that you were spending your money on, you would know how much you've got left from that. So that's a really good idea. The bank help you with that. And as you get a little bit older, they would help you do that in a more digital way. So you might have seen your parents keep a track of things by looking at their phones and looking at their apps on their phone. And that's a really popular way now of people keeping a track of what they have in their bank account but more so what they're spending and making sure that what they're spending are the right things coming out of their account and there's nothing on there that shouldn't be on there. So that's a really important point as well. And we do a lot of advice as well. So when people come in, we offer them advice around reviewing their account and making sure that they're spending things in the right way and things aren't causing problems. And as you get older, that might be something of use to you. Um, so those are certain things that we do. And even if you look at your parents, app, if they happen to bank with NatWest, you can now categorise things. So it means that it will tell you what, what things are going into eating out, what things are going into uh, maybe bills or what things are going into shopping. So you know which areas you're spending more money on. Um, so you can break it right down. And actually, you could do that in a book yourself as well. So some really good things that the bank do, but you can do yourselves at home as well. Good. Thank you, Trudy. I'm sure I remember I was seeing on my banking app once that you could get a pie chart or something and it, it was all different colour coded. So it yeah, showed yeah. me what I was spending my money on. It's so really nice if you get something visual around yeah. it that you can see because it does make you think about it. Yeah, it's a great idea. All right, then, moving on, let's have a look at our next activity then. We're going to go to an imaginary family here, and these are called the Smith family. Now, we've said about 
lots of things cost money. They do. But sometimes it's hard to know how much money they cost because at your age, the people, most of the people joining us for this session in year R1 or 2, most of the time your parents might get out their bank card and pay for it. So you never actually see how much they're spending. So we're going to have a little estimation game here. Now, estimation sort of means guessing, but not wild guessing, not random guessing. It means having a think and it's an educated guess. So we want to estimate how much some of these things cost. We've got nine different items or activities on the screen. So let's uh, I'll, I'll see if I can go through. We've got A, a home cooked meal, a new pencil case, a piece of fruit, a trip to the cinema for the whole family, uh, one week of food for a pet, a bus ticket, a board game, so a new board game, a swimming lesson and an ice lolly. Now, we think that some of these items cost less than two pounds. Some of these items cost between two and ten. And some of these items cost more than ten pounds. So we're going to try and work as a team here. I want you guys at home to see if you can find all the things that cost more than £10. So you go for group three. So go through the items, make a note of the letters of the things that you think will cost more than £10, and you can pop them in. Just seeing on the comments, some people are saying, oh, I'm, I shouldn't be in this session because I'm a bit older than what you just said. Don't worry about it. it it's there for everybody. All right. My children join in. I know children that join in who are much older than what it's aimed for. We all learn from it. And you can stick with us for the second session, too, which is aimed at the older children as well. Right. So I leave that with you. You give me the letters of the you think things you think cost more than 10 pounds. We're going to go to our families and see if we can find the things that cost less than two pounds. And then we should be left with whatever's left in the middle. Right. I'll leave you with that on the comments. Let's go back to Lucy and Fraser. Right then, Fraser, could you go for, could you give me one or two things that you think go in the less than two pounds section? A banana and ice lolly. A banana and ice lolly. The thing that is, they really don't necessarily the right answer. Because things like the ice lolly, I suppose it depends where you buy it. I know some places where an ice lolly can cost much more than two pounds. But... I think you might be right in that most places, sensible places, one ice lolly would be less. We'll see in a minute if you're right. Thanks, Fraser. Let's pop to Annie. There might be one. There might be two more. Annie, have you got anything else? We've got the banana and the ice lolly. Is there anything else we could put into the first group? In the first group, what's going to cost less than two pounds? Um... Anything else you pop into okay. the um... What was that? A bus ticket. Yeah, particularly for you as a child, I reckon, Annie, because children's tickets are normally half the price, if I remember rightly. It's been a while since I've been on the bus. But um, children's tickets are about half the price of the adults' tickets. So under £2, I reckon you might be right on that one. What about, have you got any pets, Annie? Yeah, we've got Daisy, who's out right now. Uh, what, so how much, how much does their food cost, Annie? Because I don't have a pet. Do you reckon, is it less than two pounds to feed your pet for a week or is that more? Um, I think more. Yeah, I, mm, yeah you might be right. Is mum nodding? See, like, as, like I say, I'm clued. <laughs> Mum's nodding. Mum's saying definitely more. Okay. That's nothing more. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Annie. So we'll go with the bus ticket then into our first section as well. Let's go back to the comments then, Trudy, for our, um, the third group. Harrison and Poppy said mm. D, E, H and B. So cinema, a board game, swimming and a new pencil case. Yeah, like I said, no right or wrong answer. Danica says C and B from the more than 10. Oh, C. Oh, she was going for the under two pounds one, I think, there. My comments are just trying to refresh there. Got um, Joy with D and G. D and G is coming through a lot for good. the... Yeah, James, James age six says his cat is super greedy, so definitely it costs more than two pounds <laughs> feed in a week. Okay, right, should we, Trudy, have you got any opinions? What We said we'd do the middle one, didn't we? What are we putting in the middle then? So I guess the middle one's between two and ten pounds. Um, maybe a swimming lesson? Mm. So I think if I went down for a swimming lesson, it costs about five pounds for one swimming lesson, so okay. I would put that in there, and probably a pencil case. If I was going to mm. buy a pencil case, and again, you could buy a really simple pencil case, I guess, at a really low cost, but you could buy something quite fancy a little bit more, but probably within that, that sort of now, area. Now this, this shows the difference between where we live in different parts of the country, because where I am from, 
um, the swimming lessons that go on at the gym near where I live, I know are much, much more than that. So let's see oh, what okay. people who've made this slide have gone for. Let's see what the answers actually are. Here we go then. Things that cost less than two pounds. We've got C, F and I, the banana, the bus ticket and the ice lolly. Well done if you thought of those. Things that cost between two and ten pounds. We've got the meal, the pencil case and the pet food. Things that cost more is we've got cinema, board game and a swimming lesson in the more than ten pound yeah. column. Yeah, I thought that one where, near where I am there is quite a bit more, I think, as well. All right. Now, a really big estimation game here. And we're going to go comments only on this one. First up, how much do you think all of these nine things cost all together? We've got the actual prices on the next screen, but we're not going to show you yet. Just give me a figure. If we added up the cost of all these nine things, all these things have been done over a couple of days in the summer holidays. And when you're in the summer holidays, you're off for six weeks. So whatever we're spending in these couple of days, you do over and over and over again. Let's see if what if we can get a rough idea uh, who's going to pop it in there. Ruby, Ruby's first up. She said 48. 48. Good guess, Ruby. Let's go for a few more before we reveal the actual prices. I like these estimations. I like these guessing games. Who's going to get closer? Layla, or I believe it might be pronounced Lila. I saw from an earlier comment. Guest uh, is just disappeared from my screen. Oh no! Sixty pounds. She gets. Sixty pounds. James says fifty-six pounds. Ninety-six pounds from Ollie. Melika says fifty-five. Emily says forty-five. Good. It's two hundred and thirty pounds from Stephen. Vanessa said forty-five. Jazzy and Ida fifty-one. Uh, well, let's flip to the next slide and see some actual prices. So these were prices, not gained by me or Trudy, but from the person that created these materials for us. Have done a bit of research, and this from where they are is what they found out these things would cost. So I don't know if anyone's super duper good at their mental maths, or they've got a calculator to hand. But roughly, I would say you've got on that top row, you've got about ten and seven and one. So that's kind of eighteen pounds. Then you've got twenty-two, nine, and one or two. Then you've got fifteen. Add another twenty-five. I, I reckon it's going to be about. 91, 90. I'm just estimating here. Trudy, have you got the actual answer? Oh, you're so close, James. You're so close. What is it? <laughs> it's 90 pounds. 90 pounds. Jessica, yeah. Jessica Knight has got that. Bang on, look, 90 pounds. I don't oh, know she if has. She's yeah, well done. or whether she was just tapping away on her calculator there. Thank you, Jessica. Oh, yeah, 90 pounds. And actually, and that's, that's really good. I think it was Ollie that guessed at 96 pounds just looking at them. So that was a really good guess as well. But it's really an incredible close. amount. You could go out for that week and say, we, we didn't really do much this week. I had my swimming lesson. We, we yeah, got a new true. game. We did go to the cinema one day, but, you know, we had a, a home. We didn't eat out. We ate at home. And, um, yeah, it's amazing how those small costs do actually add up, isn't it? Incredible. So if we hadn't noted them down, so if we hadn't written down, we hadn't accounted for all those little bits. That we've got, and suddenly, at the end of the month, we're shorter than we think. It's actually because we don't note down those little things. And actually in the school holidays is a really good time when we can start doing that because we do end up spending lots of little bits a lot more. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's um, it's interesting to look at. And kids, it will make you think actually what parents are spending in the holidays. Because when we go to the cinema, I know if you have four people go to the cinema, it's really, you know, that, that does mount up. So it's um, worth thinking about. That's it, you have to look out for the discount deals. Right, let's move yeah. on to the next slide because I think we're going to move away from the Smith family and we're going to go to Rob here. Now, let me read out what Rob has to say for himself. Rob says, I have no idea what I spend each day. My family always gives me a bit of money for school, but I just put it in a bag. Now, I know from an earlier session, he should be putting it in a, in a wallet or some, somewhere safe, shouldn't he? Not just loose in his bag. I just buy what I want and don't really think about it until I run out of money. And then... I ask for some more. Mm, not sure I agree with Rob's mm. uh, strategy here. Could we perhaps, as a group or as a team, see if we can give Rob some advice? Drop your advice into the comments and tell Rob what you think he should be doing. Let's flip. Now, I don't know if I pre-warned them on this, but let's flip back to Fraser. Fraser, I'm going to surprise you here because I didn't think I'd say I'd come to you here. Fraser, have you got some advice for Rob? 
Yeah, he should. He should be. He should budget. So, so you say how much you spend every day. So he should keep a track of it and actually budget and and make sure that he's not just spending it on pointless things. Yeah. 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 Good. Thanks, Fraser. Yeah, good answer. Nice. Okay, we've got um, oh disappeared off there. I can't, I couldn't see the name anymore. But someone said he should keep a piggy bank. Sorry, whoever that was, you've disappeared from my screen. Um, somebody said that he should spend less. Yeah, maybe he shouldn't be spent saving some for emergencies. Says Ollie. Um, and Ruben said should you know, be saving as well. Layla. So Layla said should be spending it on what he needs. And keep a track of what he spends. So I like the fact that he's brought up about needs there. Where Definitely we've done the needs and wants. <laughs> yeah, only the things that we need. Uh, should have thought about things more. He should ask his parents if he can buy things before buying it. Mm. Lots of good advice for Rob there. Trudy, have you got anything else that uh, people haven't mentioned? So I think uh, when we're sort of having money and a bit of money for school, yeah, keeping a track of what we're spending thing. And I think Layla had a really good point there on spending money that you need. So if you've got money there, just buy what you need. You don't have to buy endlessly and spend that money just because you've got it. Because actually, if you didn't, it might mean that you have a little bit more money left at the end of the week. And then, mm. as we've mentioned in previous weeks, that's something that you could put towards something else or even save. Um, and then you wouldn't be running out of money. So it's a good lesson to learn. Yeah, good. And it, there was a saying that I, I think my gran or my mum, or actually probably both of them used to say to me all the time when I was younger. And they used to say, if you look after the pennies, then the pounds will take care of themselves. themselves so sometimes yeah. they didn't know what, did they mean actual pennies? But it, it's kind of a, a saying or a phrase as well, because it means if you watch what you do in the small things, then you'll, you'll end up having enough money for the big things for too. The big things. And yeah, I think to really show a, re, a real example of this, if we flip to the next slide, we've got not Rob, but Anna now. And Anna says, I buy a snack every day. I only put 50p each day in my purse, so I don't spend more than that. So very good budgeting there. Some days I don't feel hungry, but I just buy something anyway and I give it to a friend because it's only 50p. Now... She says it's only 50p. And on its own, 150p is a bit like, well, it's only 50p. But we want to try and work out if Anna decided that she wouldn't spend her 50p on just one day each week. So she can still spend it on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday. But maybe on a Thursday, she keeps it. And then she spends it on a Friday again. So if one day a week she saved it instead of spending it, how much would that add up to? If we looked after the 50ps, would the pounds take care of themselves? So let's see who's going to be first through with this answer. How much would Anna have at the end of a year if she saved 50p each week? So, you know, Ruby's saying £182.50. It's not what I, that's quite a lot. I suppose that depends. Maybe she was working out on her saving it every day. Actually, yeah, that does work out. It's saving 50p every day. Ollie says £26. I'll give you that one, Ollie. And Melika said 50p times 52 weeks. But I'm going to go with it could be a bit less because it could just be the school days. So maybe she doesn't do it during the holidays. But the two answers I've got is the £26 or about £19 or £19.50, depending on how many weeks you are at school. But either way, it's a good £20 or more that just one day a week she decides not to spend it. So there is a real, there, true example of that whole look after the pennies, look after the small things and the big things will come and they'll take care of themselves. So great answers, people. What's the time going? Oh, 10.24, time flies. Quiz time. Final Indeed. quiz of these sessions. Let's see who's been paying attention. Slightly different quiz this time. We're not going to put all the questions up one by one. We're going to whack them all up together because it's a true or false quiz. So we've got four statements. And the way you're going to answer them is this. You're not going to do it question one and question two this. You're just going to put four letters on the screen in the comments. So if you thought they were all true, you would write T, 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 T. If you thought the first three were true and the last one was false, I want you to put T, 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 F. If you can use capitals or put a space in between each one in the comments, it will make it easier for us to read. Who is going to get the correct sequence of letters for this? So whilst you're typing them in, I'm going to read them out for you. Number one. Keeping track of spending money is important, 
so that people can manage their money. Is that true? Is that false? Trudy, do you want to read number two? Hmm. Lots of small cost items can cause problems as they all add up and can result in spending lots of money. Hmm. Is that true or is that false? Number three, everyone should spend a small amount of money each day. A bit like Anna. Is that true or is that false? Should everyone spend a small amount each day? And Trudy, over to you for number four. And the last one. So using a timetable or a notepad can help people be more organised with their spending. True mm. or false? So we've got a few coming through now. Right, I'm going to scroll down because it's the last one. We'll see if we can mention as many as we can. So James says TTFT. Ruby says TTTT. We've got TTFT from Louise. We've got TTFT from David Jackson. We've got TTTF from, oh, disappeared, I'm afraid. We've got Efetobo says TTFT. Jessica says TTTT. Emily says TTTT. <laughs> Abby says TTFT. Anyone just tuning in will wonder what on earth we're going on about. <laughs> Blue pods say TTFT. This is looking a popular one, TFFT from Stephen, who has on an earlier comment told me who's actually watching because it's not Stephen. I'm going to go with James. I can't remember, I'm afraid. Lots of T's, lots of... Uh, what is it, Trudy? Help us out. Tell us. I think the majority of people have got that right. So we're going to go with TTFT. So well done to everybody who got that. So yes, true, true, false and true. So the yeah, only one that was false was that everyone should spend a small amount of money each day. And I can um, see the confusion there because where it's a small yeah. amount, you could think, well, it should. You shouldn't spend lots. You should only spend a small amount. But I think the trick there was that some days it's best to try and not spend anything. Anything at all, yeah. Good. We've got a couple of minutes for those questions. We'll probably have one from the comments and one from the family. So see if you're lucky. Got a question for Trudy, write it in and it might be you that we come to. Whilst we're waiting for that question to come through, let's go to Lindsay and Annie because we went to Lucy and Fraser last. Annie, do you have a question for Trudy? Um, should I save my birthday money? Should you save your birthday money? Oh, gosh. So saving your birthday money, I guess that's really up to you because it depends what you're wanting to do. It might be that you have, and we've gone through this in a previous session, that you might have your eye on something that you really want to save for. So it might be a pet or it might be a game or something like that. And if you're doing that, it's really good that you save that money and then eventually you can get to that end goal of buying the game or the pet that you want. So saving money is always a good thing to do, but it might be that you want to spend a little bit because it's your birthday so that you can treat yourself as well. Um, and you can save that maybe in a piggy bank um, or go to the bank, of course, and have your money in the bank because it's nice and safe there. There you go. That work. <laughs> yeah, good. Thanks, Danny. Uh, here's an interesting question from Ruby, one of our regulars, um, Trudy. She says, have people been spending less during lockdown? Do you think people have been spending less or more? Goes, oh, oh, I wonder if that means Trudy's just dropped out. My expert's gone. I'm going to go with this one then. Have people been spending less money or more money? Do you know what, Ruby? I would think less. Oh, she's back. You you go then, Trudy. Oh, sorry, I next. went. I what disappeared then. Um, I would, yeah, I heard what you were saying just at the end there. And I would say definitely through lockdown, um, people have been spending less. The shops haven't been open. So people haven't had as many opportunities to go out and buy things. Maybe not driving places, so not spending as much petrol or fuel, um, not going out and buying clothes and those types of things. Um, so there's lots of things we haven't been spending money on. We might have been spending a little bit more on food, possibly. Um, that's the one thing that we probably have been spending money on. But I would say on the whole, we haven't been paying for gym memberships or classes or things that we might have been. So um, I think a lot of people would have saved um, a fair amount of money. Yeah, although some people looking at the comments are saying they've been spending more. So it must have been those big ticket items, those the hot tubs. Yeah. And like that. Well, time has caught up on us. We've got to prepare yes. and get ready for those people who are probably joining on the comments now because they're here for the older session on starting a business. We're not going to be back next week because that is it. We are done. So, Trudy, what could people do if they do want that little bit of extra fix and learning about money? 
Okay, so um, firstly, it has been fantastic being able to come out to you for the last eight weeks. And thank you, everybody that's tuned in for the last eight, we eight weeks, or even if it's just this week, it's been a pleasure. Um, now, you can go and visit the Money Sense website. You can do that at any time going forward. And there's some ideas showing on the screen there. But please visit all the sessions that we've done before as well on Facebook Live or on YouTube, because you can play them back at your own pace. And obviously share them within your schools when you're going back as well, because um, they're going to be there for a while and you can get some really great tips around money going forward. But I will say bye for now and uh, we'll get ready for our next session. I'll just hand over to James. Yeah, we'll just pop offline for about 30 seconds to a minute or so just to get things ready. Um, but if you're not sticking with us to learn about starting a business, then it's been great to meet you. Um, great to have you joining in and take care and stay safe. Bye bye. Bye bye. So hello, and we're back again. So hello to those of you that may be joining us as new people. So this session is for our eight to 12 year olds. Um, we've just delivered our five to eight year old session. So if some of you younger people are still on board, um, nice to see you still on board. If we've got new people, hello to you as well. So this is week eight of our sessions. Um, can't believe that we've been delivering these for eight sessions, but it's been fantastic over those weeks. And I hope you've all had as much fun as we have in delivering them. Uh, we're going to be looking at a really interesting subject today. So starting something new or starting a business. Um, so my name is Trudy. I'm Trudy Zimmer. I'm a community banker from NatWest. Ordinarily, I'd be out and about in schools delivering these sorts of sessions, but happy to bring this to your homes and help you parents with the homeschooling that's going on at the moment. So starting a business can be an exciting time, but it also can be a real risky time if not thought about carefully. So there are some things that entrepreneurs or people that set up businesses, so that's what an entrepreneur is, it's a person that sets up a business, can do to limit these risks and to try and make money. So they could keep ideas really simple, they could monitor the costs, or they could just be really, really passionate about the project that they're going forward with. There's a few things to think about there. So they might think that in life there's a perfect time to start something new but that's not always the case. It's important, however, to be knowledgeable in the area that you do wish to profit in. So anything you're thinking about going into business, it's really important to do that, that research and spend a bit of time around it. And that's some of the things we're gonna look at today. There's a world today where young people have so much technology at their fingertips, and it's the way that we can use that and where do we start with regards to starting in business. And that's something we're gonna find out a little bit more about in this session. So let me hand over to James to say hi. Hi, thanks Trudy. Hi everyone that's stuck with us and is, is back again this week and hello if you are new. If you are new, my name's James. I'm a former primary teacher, uh, but I've also been really looking forward to this week because I left my role as a primary teacher last year to start a business. So I started a new business called Number Stacks, bit of, bit of promotion there, which is a, a math resource to help parents and children at home with their maths. And I'll talk a little bit more about that because it will help us with some of the questions and activities that we go through. Um, how old do you have to be to start a business though? Do you have to wait till you're 40 like me? No, because there was a young boy in the news this week whose name was, I believe, Alfie, and he's aged six. Did you hear about him, Trudy? No, tell me. Yeah, Alfie, you need to tell me about that. It might be my local news, but Alfie is six and he started up a gardening business. And he, okay. he bought him, so he did some gardening jobs for his neighbours and then he used the money to buy a lawnmower. And, uh, and now he's doing lots of jobs for people. And he even offers discounts for the elderly and for NHS people as well. So well done <laughs> to you, Alfie. And it just goes to show that, you know, this isn't fictional stuff. Anybody watching today could be the next Alfie. And even at the age of nine or 11, however old you are, you could be the person that starts up your business next. So what do you need in order to start a business? Well, the first thing you need is an idea. 
And sometimes people take this idea and they turn it into something that's called a mission statement or a vision. So your vision or your mission statement is what, what is it that you want to try and achieve? And to help you with your thinking, we've got a few ideas here on the screen. So companies you might have heard of or you might not have heard of. The first one is IKEA. And IKEA is a, a furniture company, a very, very big furniture company, uh, Scandinavian. And their mission statement is to create a better everyday life for the many people. So they design all different furniture items and kitchen items and storage things that's going to help make people's everyday life better. And that is what they always think of when they're building their business. TED, you may or may not have heard of, it stands for Technology, Education and Design. And they are a company that organise events and conferences and talks for people to share their expertise and give ideas to others. And their mission statement is brilliant. It's so simple. It's to spread ideas. What a simple thing. So they built their business in order to spread ideas. And uh, Google, probably the biggest company of them all, don't tell them this, but I think they've got the worst mission statement because it's complicated. <laughs> Their mission statement or vision is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. I don't think that's the greatest one if you're going to start a business. I think you need something a bit more catchy than that. But hey, it's what they do. They make sure that we can all find the answers to the things mm. that we want to search for. So brilliant first activity here. We want you to think, have you got any ideas for starting a business? If so, what would that business be? Would it be like Alfie, a gardening business? And if it was, what would your vision or your mission statement be? Like if it was Alfie, you could say um, he's, he's doing a gardening business and his vision might be to help everybody keep their gardens tidy. I know it's not that catchy, but do you know what? It, it, it does what it says on the tin, doesn't it? Trudy, have you, have you got any ideas? Um, no, no, to be honest, I haven't really got any ideas for starting up a business so I guess if I did it it might be along the fitness side of things ah, um, and doing something and that could have been especially good within lockdown maybe um, you know you can't go to your gym but I can keep you fit or something like that along those lines so, so um, I, hadn't put, I hadn't put you on the spot in the last session so I thought I'd try yeah so you thought you'd get me back I, get I know <laughs> some people that have got some ideas though and they are the families that are with us this week we'll just see if some people can put their ideas in the comments for us while we talk to them so let's go to um Catherine and her daughter Danica first time with us this week Catherine and Danica are you there Hello. yes they are now Danica we had a little chat Hello. earlier would you like to share your ideas with people my business is called Paw Patrol it and the slogan is here to help your four-legged friends here to help that. your four-legged friends and should we pop that can we i don't know jamie our technical guy could you make us a bit bit, bit bigger on the screen or danica a bit bigger if possible there we go do you want to hold up your logo because you've even had a thought about that haven't you hold it in front of the camera so we can see it come across there we go she's got that poor one there yep picture of the paw print so uh great four-legged friends so a dog walking business that's a really good idea and something you could mm. definitely go with after this session thanks danica We've got uh, Ruby said, I'm uh, just scrolling back. Ruby wants to start a dance centre, an online dance centre. And the mission would be all humans deserve a chance to a chance to dance. I love it. I love the rhyming. All humans deserve a chance to dance. Brilliant stuff. Let's scroll through, see if we've got any. I've got people. one here from an Oliver T, a go tree on. pruning business, making trees look better. Oh, yeah, make those trees feel good about them. A lot of thought gone into that. There is, and people are really thinking on the spot here. Um, let's flip to uh, Sophie and Katie with their mum, Claire. They're back with us this week, and these have got some more brilliant ideas. Who's going first, girls? Hey. Go on, then. Mine is a um, swimming pool, has a attachment, and it's called Swimming Pool Hose. It's connecting you to a stress-free pool. Connecting you to a stress-free pool. So I think you saw a need here, didn't you? Did your pool or your that you've got in your garden keep collecting loads of rubbish in it? Yeah. Get a bit mucky. So you thought, ah, oh, I've got an idea. I'm going to come up and create something that's going to help people to clean their pools. And so many people have got paddling pools out and hot tubs mm. and things like that in their garden. So you could be in big business here. And what's the other idea? Um, mine is the pet groomers. So that. Let us, uh, let us groom your pets and make you happy. 
Very good. Making and then, them oh, fluffy. Okay. <laughs> Let's groom your pets to make them fluffy. And I think it's important that your statement or your vision tells people a bit about what your what your idea and what your product is. But I love those pictures, girls. Great work. We'll come back to you in a bit as well. Let's have a quick look more on the comments. We've got um, someone, someone, lots of people don't know. And actually, we're not expecting you to come up because thinking of a business can take weeks. It can take months even. So you don't have to cre create it in these couple of minutes that we've got here. You could think about it after. This session is really just to give you some steps that you could take in order to, to get yourself on that way. OK, Absolutely. Uh, I've got to share mine. You know, th this is mine. So my business is called Number Stacks and you can't quite see there, but it says making sense of numbers. So my mission was that I want children to understand numbers and maths and what it's about. So that's where I came from there. Um, OK, Did I, have I read out the shout outs? I don't think I have, have I? We've done some of them. We have done I some. I saw one come through for interior design, which I thought was, gosh, somebody's really thought about that, that they want to uh, do a business around interior design. Um, other than that, I think we've sh we've said them all there. Shall I shall I sort of say how the banks can help? Yes, please. That would be great. Okay, so the banks can help around businesses. And um, actually, if you have a business idea, there's a few different people that you can go to with that. But the banks are somebody who are there to support and help. So it's not just a case of you can come in and open account an account because actually. For a business, you would need a slightly different account to what you would need as an individual. So, James, you may have found that with your new business that you needed a different account for your business than you have like for your day to day for spending your bill. So they're different types of accounts. Um, so that's one thing to consider. It's really important to talk to people as well when you're thinking about a business. We've said this um, in lots of things that. Think about your idea, bounce it off other people. Think about if it's gonna work. Maybe do a bit of research around that and think actually, is there a need for that particular business? And then coming to the bank, we can direct you to lots of different people who can help you. It might be that you need a little bit of extra money to help you set up that business. It might be that you need some guidance for the math side of things, for, from the, like, the account side of things. And there's different packages that you can have to help with that. Or it might be that you feel you need to go to some certain events to just get some information around business. And again, we can direct you. We have lots of links around that. But there's lots of free things, free things that we can use. Is that your doorbell? It is my doorbell. It's definitely live. Someone's at the door. I can wait. <laughs> so the bank can help you in so many ways. But if you're thinking about a business and you're at that stage, you can either talk to the bank talk to your friends and family and we can certainly help you but you will eventually need a special business account to help you go forward with that so yeah i just thought i'd add in how the the banks can help that and i'll just add a little bit more information to that so with regards to the bank we've been set to help fifty thousand new businesses across the uk by 2023 so, and there's a real focus at the moment on young people to start up their own businesses through which you, you might have heard of the Prince's Trust Enterprise Programme. So that particular programme provides training and money to support and help make people's dream a real reality. And, and I've seen young people go through this particular programme, fantastic programme that helps people on the right tracks for businesses. Um, and there's also something called the Business Builder Programme, which we promote as well as part of a bank. And it provides free help and guidance to starting up a new business. So if you're at that stage and you do want to start that up, things to bear in mind that can help you along the way. Because um, take as much free help as you possibly can if you're starting up a business, because there's lots out there. Good. Thank you, Trudy. I have just have actually realised, thinking back, that we haven't done our hellos, which I would normally do at the start. So I'm going to take my deep breath and read my list of, of people and apologise <laughs> if I miss anyone out. So I know that we've got with us today... Isaiah, Apex, Claire, Josh, Amelia, Peter, Year 5 from All Saints in Putney. We've got Billy and Sam, Isla and Nina, Louise, Adam, Natalie, Vicky, Elaine, Jazzy and Isla, Helena, Ruby and Layla, Abby and Lauren, Summer Louise. And apologies if I missed anybody out um, of that list. So there are the well people. That and again, this is what's great about doing these sessions live, that we've got that interaction and those people joining us. Activity two. Let's flip to the next screen and see what we've got on there. We have got, ah, yeah, so when you're starting a business, you're going to need to think about lots of different things, things that you might need. So all we want you to do for this one is to match up the pictures with 
the statement. So you just need to match up numbers with letters. What do all of these pictures mean? What do they represent? What might we have to think about and consider when we've started our business after we've got our idea? So give us a letter if you think, just do one of them. If you think number five goes with B, then just pop 5B into the comments and uh, and we'll give us, or we'll see what you come up with. Let's go back to uh, Catherine and Danica. See if you can start us off and get us on our way, Danica. What what are we going to go for? What have we got? The first one is A1. So A1. So mm. picture number one is the people. So they represent our staff. The staff are the people that work for you. And if they're working for you, you've got to pay them some salary or pay them some wages. So that's going to cost you some money, isn't it? Thanks, Danica. Do you want to go for another well, one while we put you online? D4. Number four and D. So number four, the picture of the buildings is the facilities. Yeah, the place. So if I'm going to do a, a, a pet business, pet grooming business, and I need somewhere for the pets to come to do the grooming of them. Or someone said about a dog hotel where you're going to need to buy the building to be the hotel, aren't you? They're good. Thanks for that, Danica. Let's go to Sophie and Katie, see if they can do one each. So we've done number one and number four, girls. <laughs> I think six is C. Six is C, the well-being. Yeah, you, the people that work for you, you want them to be happy. And especially in this day and age, it's really important mm. to look after them as well and make sure that their mental health and their well-being is, is in a good place. So that's number six. And what else? We go for another one, shall we? Five F. Five F. So that's the picture of the charts and the, the little sheets of paper. And that is market research. Yeah, we're going to come on to that in a moment. So good match up there. So that leaves us with two. We've got number two and number three. Let's see. So Arush said three B. So yep, three is a picture of the materials that we need. If you're going to make a product, then you're going to need to buy those materials first. And lots of people saying three B. Have we got anyone that's given us an answer for four? Four and D. Oh, we said four. Sorry. What four. was the last one? Two. Two A. Peter, Peter said two was A. Two was the staff. Oh, we haven't got, no, I think number one was the staff. What's number two going to go with then? It still looks like a picture of somebody that works for you. So who's going to be the first one to give us a number two? Two E. Ah, well done, okay. Gabriella. Two goes with E. Yeah, two is training your staff. You've got to give them some training and give them the skills to be able to do the job that you want them to do. Yeah, so loads of stuff there. And the thing about them all is all of those things generally are going to cost you money. So starting a business can be quite expensive, which is why it's important to perhaps firstly start small. Concentrate firstly on number on the materials, the things that you're going to need to make whatever it is you need. And what you might not think is most important is probably F, the market research. So let's flip onto the next screen. And let's have a look at this market research. Market research is where you test your idea out because it's great. You could have this amazing idea for a dog hotel. We're going to go with that, whoever came up with that idea. And you think, brilliant idea, dog hotel. People are going to send their dogs from all around the country to come to our hotel. And then you spend loads of money on it and you didn't realise that somebody has already made a dog hotel and, uh, and everyone's just going to go there instead. So your idea wasn't as good as you thought it was. Or... Or you have a really good idea that you thought about something that you could use as a, a new tin opener. And it's a special way that you open tins in a much easier way. And you, you make one and you give it to someone to try and they go, oh, no, I can't use it. This is really difficult. It's rubbish. No one's going to buy it. And you go, oh, well, I've, I've already made a thousand of them and spent all my savings. So market research is where you test your ideas. And there's two types. We've got what's called primary research, which is where you actually meet with people and you need other people there to talk to and respond to. And then secondary research is what you can do from the comfort of your own home, which is where you might go online and, and use the computer to do it. So very quickly then, we've got different types of research from A through to I. And all I want you to do, maybe just do this on a paper at home, is split your paper in half and write each letter on one of those two sides. Which of those things need people for you to do that research so you actually need to go out and talk to people and meet people and which of those things are secondary research because you can do it on your own just by looking things up and maybe using google that company we saw earlier let's 
flip the comments. I don't know if we've got time necessarily for people to write all these in. We'll give them just a moment, though. What oh, did pretty... you do, James, what for would... your business? What did so, I do? What sort of research, yeah. Oh, well, because, well, firstly, I worked in a school, so I had a chance to actually try some of my ideas out of how to use number stacks, how to use these things to help. But then I, I, I made some and I gave them to schools for free. Okay. Um, and just got feedback from them. So they then wrote back to me and told me what worked, what didn't work, so that I could change it and, and change the different things to, to try and make so it good. So testing it, really. Yeah, so, so I didn't go forward and, and make, you know, a, a hundred sets of them. I just made about five sets of number stacks and gave them to different schools. So that, that, would, be, that would be primary research, because I actually visited yeah. the school and yeah. took them. Let's have a look. So we've got Vicky says, A could be both primary and secondary, yes because you could do your questionnaire, go yeah. out with people or do it online. Great answer there. C, who's that said? Sonia says C is secondary. So yeah, you could look at surveys that have already been done. Uh, also said observations is primary. So watching people using whatever you're thinking about. Ollie T <laughs> says primary is A, B, C, F and H. So questionnaires, questionnaires observations, surveys, discussion groups and testing. Ollie, you've got this sorted, definitely. Have you done a business studies degree or something? <laughs> Knows more about it than I do, does Ollie? And Ollie's just gone there with D, E, G and I for secondary. But some slot into both, don't they? And I think we've all learned, hey. really, that during lockdown that we can do a lot of our work using the computer and using video yeah. calls and stuff like that. Yeah. Can we see the answers? Hopefully. There they are. Right. So let's see if Ollie was right. Questionnaires, observations, surveys, discussion, testing is all. You need the people there to be able to interact and talk to. Whereas looking at surveys that have been done, books, articles, newspapers, the internet, there's things just reading you can do. And perhaps it's a good idea to start with a bit of secondary research just to see if somebody's already doing an interior design business like you, how much they're charging, how much money they're making, see if it's worthwhile, and then perhaps do a bit of primary. They should have almost have called it the other way around, shouldn't they? <laughs> Should have done the, the secondary research first, but that doesn't really make sense. Uh, right. OK, what is the time? For 10.52. It's gone so quick again. One last thing before we do the quiz, and that is sometimes when you've had your idea, you're going to find that things aren't quite working. People are going to give you feedback and say, you might need to think about this again. And the best way to approach that is to sometimes get together with a group of people. It could be with your friends. It could be with your parents and to do what we call thinking outside the box, which means to try and think of really new and original ideas to fix those problems. Right? Not just doing the same old thing that everybody's thought of. Think outside the box. And this is called sometimes blue sky thinking. I think it's blue sky because they kind of make you almost come out, go right up to the sky and look down on your ideas. And there's a rule when you do blue sky thinking, which is there's no such thing as a silly idea. Yeah. Share everything you possibly can because you never know what the best idea might be. Don't keep quiet and go, mm, I've got an idea, but it's a bit silly. Everybody shares their ideas. And sometimes you mix two or three ideas together to get your perfect solution. So that's what blue sky thinking is. OK, quiz time. Otherwise, we're going to run over by a mile. <laughs> quiz time. Here we go. As always, usual rules, first person to put it in the comments is going to get the shout out. Number one, what is an entrepreneur? Difficult to say, an entrepreneur. What is an entrepreneur? We did mention this, I know. It was right at the start, however. You did, you definitely said it because I was listening out for it to make sure you had mentioned it because I knew it was coming up in the quiz. Uh, is it a business maker? Yeah, I'm going to give that to you. Yeah, I go with that. An entrepreneur is someone that has an idea and perhaps starts to turn it into a business. And I said about that young boy, Alfie, is a six year old entrepreneur. Uh, Vicky also got that one. Um, oh, lots of people getting this one. Yeah, loads of people coming through. It's that person who thinks well of the done, idea guys. and starts it as a business. Question two. What is all oh, loads of possible answers for this? What do you need? in order to start your business. Now, there was, there was one key thing, because you've got nowhere unless you've got this very first thing, but what do you need in order to start a business? It always takes a little bit of time for the first comment to come through. Emily, Emily Griffith says, a great idea. Every business starts with a great idea. But what else could we say? 
Apex says you need profit. You do need often you do need a little bit of money to start. Staff and facilities are things you'll need once yeah. you get going a little bit. But yeah, money, ideas, advice, do a bit of research first. But I think that first thing is definitely the good idea, isn't it? Without an idea, your business is nothing. Number I think self-belief as well, James. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Believing be in, in your business. Be persistent. You can't uh, yeah. persevere. You can't just give up. Number three, what is market research? Who is going to get that? Although Ollie T's come in again saying capital, because that is the name that you give to the money that you've got to start your business, isn't it? You must have some capital yeah. at the start. Very good. I think Ollie T's actually about 17 rather than... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking, Ollie. You're just... just <laughs> Very good answer. Clever boy. Yeah. Um, what do we say? What is market research? Finding out stuff. Pizza man. No idea who you are, pizza man, but you got it. It's where you need to find stuff out. See what people like. Yeah, like that one as well. Gathering the information, Caroline Sue. Testing the ideas from Madison. Finding information so that you minimize the risk. Adriana. Yeah, you don't want to spend the money unless you know your idea is going to work. They're great ideas. Number four. What is blue? Oh, I just talked about this one. What is blue sky thinking? I used another phrase to explain what it is. Blue sky thinking is where you do what? Let's see who's going to be that first person to get it. Blue sky thinking is. Oh, blank one's coming in there. Someone hit enter. Thinking outside the box. There we go. Lou yeah, yeah. said that one. Thinking again, said Gemma Titch. Yep, thinking about that. Thinking outside the box from Vicky. Yeah. And, and actually, you know, that's such an important one. I don't know why we said it at the end. Perhaps we sort of should have said that when you went back to thinking of your idea in the first place. Don't do just because you've seen something on the TV that somebody already does. You've got to think, what is there? What do people need that isn't or doesn't already exist? So there we go. I think 10.57, we've got time for one or two questions before we'll have to say goodbye for the last Absolutely. time. Absolutely. So Trudy, let's see if we can test you with a real tricky one. Um, let's go to uh, Catherine and Danica. Okay. Unless they've, there they are, they are still with us. Danica, what's your question? Yeah. Just saying, would you be my business then? Would you be my business then? <laughs> would I? Would you be my? Would you help me be my business? Oh, would I help you, with your business? Will you be Danica's mentor? Will you help her with her pet business? I would love to help you with a pet business because I've got two dogs, so your business is perfect for me. So yeah, I would love to help um, you with your business. <laughs> yeah, <there laughs> Great go. question. Good and question. Of course, yeah, make sure you speak to your mum and everything about it as well with your friends and family because uh, lots of them will be able to help as well. There we go. And you will catch up. You can get Trudy's email at the end of the session when we're not on, when we're not <laughs> online anymore. Yeah. Um, Trudy, a good, good idea. Good question that came through, which said someone said, how would you get a loan as a child? Because I don't think they could get a loan. But how could they get no. a little bit of money to start their business? So I think that's a case of talking to people that, you know, talking to your friends and family. So maybe Alfie, who you were talking about, maybe his parents helped him a little bit to start with, or it might be that he saved a little bit of his money. So he had a little bit to start out on a small business. Some businesses don't have to cost that much to actually get going. So if you were doing a dog walking business, for example, um, actually that doesn't really cost hardly anything, if anything, to, to start off. And then you could save some of the money you're making and build that up so that you can gradually buy things. Um, but yeah, to borrow money from a bank, you need to be 18 to borrow money. So until you're 18, we wouldn't be able to borrow money. But um, you can talk to your parents, etc., and friends around that. Good. And and just I uh, don't mind, we're going to run out. It's the last one. We'll get in trouble, Trudy. But just going to run over That's a little fine. bit. Because somebody, a really good one from Louise Aubrey said, what, what should you do if your business runs out of money? Should you just borrow some more and keep borrowing more or... What do you do if it runs out? So I think you need to look at that just like you would on your own account. So it, imagine that that was your own account, your own personal account. And actually, if you ran out of money, what would you do? You would need to look at things quite closely. Look at actually why has my account gone 
got to that point? Why do I need to borrow more money? And is there, how much is the risk in borrowing more money? So it's all about balancing out the risk against actually where you stand and thinking about the market. And all those things that you would have done initially would probably need revisiting all those bits of research to make sure you're at a good point to actually borrow more money and it's affordable to do so. Um, mm. But pop in, talk to an expert and they'll be able to help you through that. Yeah, and we've said that many times on many sessions about just talking, haven't we? Talk yeah, to the bank, really talk, to the parent, talk to someone. So I, I'm getting business offers here from people about the dog business in the dog hotel. So I know what I'm <laughs> doing over the next week. I'm going to be weighing up whether I want to invest in, in these guys. Look out for that one. Maybe I'll have to find them on YouTube to see if I, if I decide <laughs> if it's a good idea or not. But Trudy, um, just before okay. we go, what, is there anything that people can do to keep busy while we're not here? Okay, so first of all, as this is our final lesson, which I can't believe, um, first of all, I'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone for joining us. It's been great doing this over the last eight weeks, really enjoyed it. And I hope that everyone who's been listening has, has had as much fun as me and James have had in delivering these. Um, you know, we've enjoyed every lesson. We're grateful for all your comments that you've had come through, because actually if we don't have your comments come through, it doesn't make it as interactive. And we've had so many comments that we can't keep up with them most of the time. No. So um, that's been fantastic. But as normal, yes, you can go to the Money Sense website, which is showing on the screen there with some great games, educational information, not only for you children, but for your parents as well and for your teachers when you go back. Please share everything that we've done before. So we've got eight weeks worth of lessons that you can go and look at on Facebook Live, but also on YouTube. So share them not only for yourselves at home, but when you go back into school with your lessons, with your teachers, those are all things that can be shared. It's been an absolute pleasure doing this. So children, thank you so much for your interaction. Um, and no doubt I will look forward to seeing you at some point in the future, maybe. So I'll hand over to James to say bye. Yeah, as Trudy said, thank you to all our regulars that have joined us week on week. Thanks to the tech team, to Jamie and to Derek in particular, who's been with us behind the scenes. Mm, Thanks to yeah. all of our families. Uh, it's been a blast. Um, but stay safe and make sure this week you think of that first business idea, you develop it. And I'd love to read about one of you guys in the news, maybe even the dog hotel and, and heard that you've made it big as a result of a first thought from one of our sessions. But yeah, we'll we might even see them on Dragon's Den. Hey? Yeah, we'll look out for it. But stay <laughs> safe, take care and bye-bye. Uh, bye-bye.